Good morning, good morning, good morning, and happy Juneteenth. Happy Saturday, but happy Juneteenth. We are here today with the author of the curriculum, Get Up, Miss Abigail Stone, and we can't forget Judah. Judah has been with us all we all three weeks sharing his story and, and how bullying affected him, how domestic violence affected him. And today we're going to learn about how fathers, the father's role in the family has affected him. So Duda, thank you so much for sharing with us. It's so nice to get a young person's point of view. Usually it's all the adults on and, and we're telling everybody what to do and, and listening to each other, but it's really nice to sit down and have a young person to listen to. So of course we love your mama and we love that she has shared and opened herself up. But Judah, we can't thank you enough. Um, it's invaluable what you bought us these last three weeks. So thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful Juneteenth and we're gonna we're gonna get our show going because we know people want to go to parades and programs and all that kind of stuff so we're gonna be timely today so Abigail I'm gonna let you jump right in thank you <laughs> okay I'm gonna share my screen once again here um thank you all for coming and um and for tuning in uh, you are greatly appreciated, and I definitely appreciate this opportunity to to speak. And um, first of all, we are going to still do our grounding exercises because some aspects of this could be triggering to people. Um, this meeting is being recorded. Some people have lost a parent. Some people never had their father in their life. Um, these things can be upsetting or triggering. And I just want to say, please stay calm, stay safe, stay present in the moment. In this moment, you're just listening to me. Um, we're sharing our stories. This is our truth. It's not the truth for everyone. It's it, doesn't define you and you don't need to go to a dark place please stay in the moment so um there's a grounding exercise i've gone over each week but for those of you who are just now tuning in um it it is what can help you to cope with any overwhelming or triggering information or if you're suffering from anxiety in the moment it can help you to stay present in the moment that you're really in, not tied to past trauma, fear, etc. So, as you can see from this um, lovely picture, uh, it's called the five, four, three, two, one method, where you uh, look around your environment and you focus on five things you could see, then four things you could touch, three things you can hear, two things you can smell, and one thing you can taste. So just for the sake of time, we're going to focus on touch. Just take a deep breath, relax, and touch something because that helps to remind your body and your senses where you are in the moment so that you don't have to spiral downward into a, a depressed state or anxiety, etc. You're in the moment. So just relax. Be in the moment, and we're going to discuss some things. Some might be controversial, but um, I hope in the end that it will be helpful to someone to know you're not alone, to have hope, to know that you're encouraged. Um, we know nowadays there are all kind of family structures. Uh, we know what could be considered traditional, but that may not be traditional for you. Again, my son and I are going to share our stories. What is the truth that we experience? Can you do me a favor, can you do me a favor Abigail? Uh, can you share your screen? Because uh, it doesn't show. Did you share it? Did you share oh. your screen? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I apologize. Oh, oh that's okay. Goodness. That's okay. I just wanted to uh, make sure that you know that. Okay. Thank you, man. Um, give me just a moment here. Oh, um, I'm not the most tech savvy person. There we go. There we go. Now we got it. Thank okay. <laughs> my age is showing now, but hopefully it doesn't show on my face. Okay. So um, I went over this 
this diagram, but I've gone over it for each week. So hopefully you get the drift of it to be present in the moment. And whichever one of these helps you, please stay present. Okay, so we're sharing our stories. I have this lovely picture here of, of on the left, that's my family. That's actually me with the rose. As you could tell, I love flowers. So this was me when I was young. I don't actually know what age I was. And my sister and my father and my mother. I grew up with this family structure. Again, this is not the truth for everybody, but I am so thankful for my father in my life. So before we go on to say other things that might be controversial or or something, I want to express that I celebrate fathers. Let, let us take a moment to celebrate. This is Father's Day weekend. Let us celebrate the fathers. Get in your mind a picture, even if you didn't have your father in your life, perhaps you had your grandfather, perhaps you had a father figure in your life. Think you know, of a, of a positive memory that you have. And let's just take a moment to cherish that. Unfortunately, my father has passed away, which has had a very painful impact on my life. And I can only imagine the pain of not having the father in the life because I am 40 fabulous years old. And I'm telling you, I still feel like I need my daddy. Okay. So that need for a daddy, I'm sure is in everyone, whether your daddy was there or whether your daddy wasn't. And so I, I still need my daddy and I, I'm thankful for him. I'm thankful for all the memories. That's what I have left to cherish. When I look at these pictures, I think of the memories that I have had of my dad. My dad took me fishing from when I was a young age. He he was like a, ba a local basketball star. They used to call him Chico. And um, he was known on the basketball courts from Cabrini Green to South Shore, okay? And um, he used to always take me and my sister, we were his biggest cheerleaders. So most of my childhood was spent at basketball courts cheering on my daddy, but my daddy was always there for me. I was a vocalist from a young age. My daddy never missed a performance of mine from age five to age 18. My daddy was always there in the audience present for me. And, and that means so very much to me. So, um, this, I have these pictures of my, my childhood with my daddy. And, um, and so I felt protected when he was there. My daddy wasn't a perfect man. But one time when we had a little intense argument when I was a little older about some things he did when I was younger and the way he treated my mother, he said, I was still there. I stayed there. I, I was there for you. And that kind of stopped me in my tracks because there's so much we want from people and we want that perfection. And no, my daddy wasn't a perfect man, but he was there. Um, I'm also going to touch on the fact that I don't believe if someone is in an abusive or toxic relationship that the, the father needs to stay there because unfortunately, some people get that a little bit uh twisted that um you know you uh you have to stay together for the children's sake i believe people should make the effort to stay together for children's sake i do have that traditional belief however there are times where separation or divorce is actually the healthiest thing for the family and again we can't stay stuck in a certain thinking about what a family needs to be. So that keeps people in bondage to dangerous situations. If the person is abusive, if the person is dangerous, please get out and you will find other ways to raise your children. Plenty of people did it. You are not alone. Uh, there's estimates that there's millions of children living right now without their father in the household. You can survive. You can do this. So if it ne necessitates your separation because of abuse or unhealthy, toxic situations, 
please don't think that that person still has to be there. And I had to say that. So yes, I'm getting controversial, but we need to discuss it because that's the way we're going to have healthy communities. Strong families make healthy communities. And what that family looks like isn't as important as our mental health, our physical health, our emotional health. Okay, so back to this picture of my baby over here that I didn't mention. You see, he's by himself. And my son's uh, father, I was married to him. So a lot of times I try to refrain from saying that I'm a single mother. I'm raising children alone, but I was married. Um, what happened was um, I married his father. His father was not born in this country. We had a very good marriage until some legal issues from his country arose and he ended up being deported, um, taken away from this country. And so, uh, and he could not return. And we had tried for a few years to have a child. And right when I found out I was pregnant is when I found out that my husband wasn't coming back. So he went on the run and abandoned me before he was, um, before he was, uh, extradited but um i ended up having this child alone even though i was married and it was a a, a very painful experience for me uh i do not recommend anyone to go through this uh but it it was the hand that i was dealt and i had to make the most of it so it was it was very difficult raising him and he has a brother with special needs alone and I didn't sign up for that because I was married and I didn't believe in divorce. I thought our marriage will last forever, but that's the thing. There are circumstances beyond our control and we cannot allow that to define us. We've got to pick ourselves up. We got to press forward. We got to be strong. We're always, you know, people are saying single mothers are so strong and everything. Sometimes we don't want to be, but that's what's necessary. We've got to keep on going. So when my son went to, uh, it was already hard enough, but when my son went to Head Start, you know, that's like the age of three, et cetera. He starts coming home one day and it's like, mom, Jacob has a daddy and, and Vanessa has a daddy and Jaleesa has a daddy and Juan has a daddy and I don't have a daddy. And whoa, that really struck me deep within my soul because I, it was painful for me too. Like I wanted his daddy to be there, but it was nothing I could do about it. So I had to um, tell my son, like, this is your family. You have a brother and you have a mother and we are your family and you have a father. He just can't be here right now. So your situation is different, baby, but we're going to make this work. We're going to get through this. I love you. Your brother loves you. And you have to be thankful for our situation, the way that it is, all the good that is in that. So this is our family, his brother with special needs, and my son, and this is us having an award for the work we do in the community uh, around affordable housing and stuff. So we're, we're turning tragedy into triumph here. From when he was three years old to now, he's a teenager. We're pressing forward. We survived. But I have to mention this dark place that I got to. There was a time because people, you know, they'll see you shining, but they don't know what you went through. And so it's important for me to mention this, that at one point around the same time when my son was three going on four, I became suicidal and really made a plan to check out. I felt that I was inadequate by myself to, to that these children didn't need me. I wasn't good enough. I was messed up and I was depressed every day and just going through the motions. Look, I want to give hope to anyone else that's out there. My son is 15 now. Yes, when he was three, I had planned to check out, but God intervened. God is so merciful that someone pointed out to me that I know everyone doesn't have the same religious beliefs, but this is what helped me, that God chose me 
to have these children. And God knew everything that I was going to go through. So therefore, even though I didn't feel it somewhere, I had the strength inside to be able to do this, to be able to overcome. And that my son, especially with special needs, needed me because I was handmade for the job and God had that purpose for my life. So that turned my life around. It was actually, it went from darkness to a turning point. And I put my motherhood as the priority and it's still the thing I'm most thankful for in my life. So I want to give my son, my son knew all of this. I know it's getting heavy, but I'm hoping I can give somebody hope to hold on. It gets better. There is hope. So no, don't take your life. Don't give up. Don't give in. You got this. And reach for the village. Reach for the village. We're going to get back to that. So Judah, I want you to share like, you know, uh, how growing up with your, without your dad and your life affected you. All right. Um, well, thank you, Ma. Um, and growing up without a father, uh, it, it was really, really, really hard for me, uh, especially when I was younger, because like, I didn't understand why I didn't have my dad. Like, and I saw everybody else with a father. I didn't have any friends that didn't have a father in their life. And um, so everybody at school had a dad with a job and and you know, nice cars, and we'll pick them up all the time. And I would see that, and I, I, I almost felt like it was my fault that I didn't have a father in my life, and I, I, I didn't know like whose fault it was that I didn't have my dad. Um, but I think one of the most like impactful um, days or experiences I had that really made me like like, um, you know, that, that really, like, really, really affected me, um, uh, was, was they had, uh, bring your father to school day at, at my, at my school in elementary. Um, and like everybody had their dad to bring and they would talk about how, oh, my dad's a, a doctor and he's making all this money and Oh, my dad's a, a a lawyer. Oh, my dad's this. Oh, my dad's that. Um, and I didn't have a dad to bring to bring your father to school day. Um, so I just I sat there and, and I like almost went into tears about it. Um, and it it really really affected me like. I had to go to the bathroom and I just started crying. Um, and I felt like I couldn't, you know, I didn't have anyone to, to really talk to about it because I felt like no one would understand. Um, and as, as I got older, it started to, to, to make me angry. Um, mm -hmm. It turned into hate, you know, for my dad and, and for my situation and it started affecting my actions and how I talk to people. Um, and uh, it, it really took me to a dark place um, and it's taken me a while to, to sort of realize it and, and try to fix it. Um, so yeah, I just want anybody else out there that, that, that you know, feel, felt like, like I did um, and, you know, let their, their, the absence of their father affect their situation. I want them to know that, you know, you can still succeed without your father. You know, you, your dad being, being there or not being there shouldn't stop you from, from, you know, succeeding. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there. Um, thank everyone. And, I hope everyone has a beautiful Juneteenth. It's nice outside, and I hope you go to the parade and have fun. Judah, so. thank you. Thank you so much. And again, like your mother, you turned tragedy into triumph. Um, and you, everybody who's listening, please share this video. 
uh, talk to your children. Judah felt responsible for something he had no control over. And lots of kids do in lots of situations. We need to talk to our children. So Judah, we are happy to have you with us. We, we have, we're watching you succeed and we'll watch you to continue to succeed. And thank you for being so vulnerable this morning. I'm gonna hand it back to you, Abigail. Thank you. Um, everyone, there is hope. Um, we don't have to be defined by our situations um, because do you remember that my forever president, uh, Barack Obama was raised by a single mother? And what I noticed is that the grandparents were involved. And so that's another reason why I feel like I still need my daddy, because there were points that um, my father was there and was really instrumental in helping us uh, to get through this. Um, I had to realize that I am not the daddy, too, because, you know, now there's this trend of especially on Father's Day, celebrating the mothers that are single mothers saying, um, you know, they're the mother and the daddy. Well, I am taking on the role that's meant for two people, but I'm not the daddy. We can only be who we are. And I, I just feel afraid that that is applying too much pressure to, you know, identify as the mother and the father. However, people can choose to identify as they see fit. You know, we all have to cope with things the best way that we can. But as for me, I had to realize I'm not the dad. So what can I do? I reached out for mentors. Unfortunately, uh, maybe we should send out a call to men that have some time, men that are, are, you know, have something to offer to young people to get involved in mentorship. Even if you can only sacrifice an hour a week to mentor somebody, we need the village. I've said it, it takes a village to raise a child was an African proverb. We need everyone on deck. We need all hands on deck because we're experiencing crises in our community because um, there are plenty of ways that uh, uh, raising children being raised alone are affected. Uh, there's behavioral problems. This is from experts have shown that, studies have shown that kids without active relationships with their father struggle with acting out behaviors, depression, suicide. Uh, these are all things that come with uh, not having the father in the household. So what, what I couldn't do was make Judah's daddy come back, okay? I couldn't bring him back from Africa. There was nothing I could do anymore. But I can reach out to other people. So I've knocked on the doors of mentorship programs from Chicago to the suburbs. And guess what? Most of them either said they didn't have any mentors, they didn't have enough mentors, or they, um, they had a waiting list. For three years, I could not find a mentor for my son. I finally started bugging one of his uh, former teachers. And um, as he has time, he talks to him. You know, um, especially since my father passed away, I didn't really have any males that I could lean on to speak to, um, to speak to my son. But see, it says here, a common psychological effect of fatherlessness is feeling angry. So my, my son has admitted he had some anger issues and we need help. We need the village. We need us all to come on board and help. And I see that as usual, my time is coming short. We all know that there's um, a lot of effects and, um, and issues that are going to affect these children. I think the best thing we can do is try to cope with it the best way we can and realize that we are a family. We are our own family. Celebrate anyhow, okay? So like every Father's Day, I, I don't say, oh, I, I'm the daddy too, but I take my children out to eat somewhere special. We dress up. We make it a good time. Sometimes we have cake, pie, treats 
special treats on this day so that my son is not feeling like, oh, because I ha don't have a daddy, you know, um, this is a sad day. It doesn't have to be a sad day. You claim it. You, you, you claim the day. You make the day, okay? And celebrate however you can. If you don't have money to go out because poverty also comes with single motherhood a lot of times. So if you, if you don't have enough money, there's still parks, there's still beaches, there's still, you know, go for a walk, enjoy yourself. And remember self-care because raising children alone can be so overwhelming. You've got to take good care of yourself. And from Oprah Winfrey, I learned about keeping a gratitude journal. I'm not sure if that's what she calls it, but basically not just myself, but I will have my son write down five things before he goes to bed that he's thankful for. See, when we focus on gratefulness, it's hard to be heartbroken. That's a saying that I came up with. The best way to combat being heartbroken is to be grateful hearted. And remember, the present is a gift. I can't change the past. I can't control what happened with Judah's father. But this present moment, we're going to have a beautiful day. Tomorrow, we're going to have a beautiful day. We're going to dress up. We're going to look good. We're going to enjoy the day. We're going to celebrate life. And so lastly, I have this. You know, it can be overwhelming. It can rattle all your emotions. It can take you to a dark place having to raise children alone. But guess what? You are not alone. The households are a million strong. That's a, a one parent household. So if you are feeling though any suicidal thoughts, we have this hotline number again. If you are feeling like you're in a crisis, please reach out. We've got the crisis text line number here. For the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, it's 1-800-273-8255. That's TALK, T-A-L-K. And then for the crisis text line, you can text HELLO to 741-741. Remember, there is hope for you. You got this. You can make it. We did. Life is a beautiful thing. Embrace all the beauty that you can find in life. And love and be grateful for the things that, that you have, the beauty that you can see. And the rest is beyond your control. And it's all right. You're not alone. Well, what can I say after that? There is hope. Thank you so much, Miss Abigail, Mr. Judah. These three weeks have been amazing, amazing. Remember, remember again, if you're triggered, we did put up the crisis hotline. Reach out, reach out family, friends, pick up the phone, whatever you text, whatever you need to do. Uh, we want you to be well. We want you to stay, stay safe. We want you to have a wonderful Juneteenth and a happy Father's Day weekend, however that looks, traditional or not. You dress up, have some fun, go to the park, go to the beach. Miss Abigail has said it all. I'm going to wish my father a happy heavenly Father's Day and my husband, who's been a great father to my sons and the stepfather to my daughter. I really appreciate them in my life. Mr. Man, happy Father's Day. Thank you so much for hosting as well. We'll see you next week on the Community Coffee. Happy Juneteenth, everybody. children, small kids at that, and my grandfather, my mother, my family. I work in restaurants. I felt like not only around my coworkers and keeping customers safe, I felt that that was important. To keep myself healthy and also part of a larger Evanston community and to keep my friends, family, and neighbors safe. I serve in a capacity in a, uh, a company that specializes in early childhood and um, early Head Start and a lot of the children around um, our educators. So I am uh, taking this shot uh, for them. I am a part-time caretaker of my 84-year-old mother, um, who is obviously in the category of most vulnerable. Um, and I also have younger children. I uh, also have a wife uh, that I care deeply about. I want to keep everyone safe as well as myself. 
not only myself, but my family, my wife, my children, and my congregation. I thought it would be a good opportunity to keep others safe as well as my family. In order to be safe and to maintain safety for the people I care about, I needed to get the shot. I think it's important for all of us to kind of take care of each other as well as ourselves. It's important to our community, it's important to our family, it's important to the world to do my part for us to get past this pandemic as a community. I was skeptical about it at first. Yes, I was one of the ones that created this as a joke when this first came out. But then I started to see family, friends, people that I knew pass away from this horrible, horrible disease. Please, it is something real, get it done. It's important for people that are black and brown to understand the importance of being vaccinated. It's important for you to know that being vaccinated means that you're showing your care and your love for your family members because you interface with them on such a regular basis, your neighbors, and of course, everybody else in the community. As a pastor of a church, I'm very excited about that because it also means that we will be able to reopen our doors for in-person worship. I want to be a part of the solution to make sure that we are able to get back to a place where we can all come together and share and love on one another. Listening Evanston Cradle to Career on Radio La Difference. Please tune in again next Saturday at 10 a.m. for another show. Now stay tuned for your Saturday morning gem. Thank you. Showing us the way